Welcome, Sippers, to another episode of Sipping Inspiration. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about Book Attender. Uh, Book Attender offers a variety of different services. We offer uh, bartenders on demand. If you have an event coming up and you need a bartender, hit us up and we'll get you a bartender over. Uh, also, if you're uh, having a function in the park, it's getting hot, weather's really nice here in New York, 81 degrees. Woo hoo, 81 degrees. So uh, you're in the park. We got beverages ready to sip. We'll deliver them right to you in your location, whatever park you're in, uh, if you're in the five boroughs. Uh, this is one of our new cocktails that we're uh, debuting today exclusively on Sipping Inspiration uh, with Miss D. You'll meet Miss D a little later. This is the Apple Tatini. So it's an apple tatini, very tasty. I'm gonna taste it later on in the show when I bring out the guests. We also offer book attender face masks. The book attender face mask, the book attender face mask has a straw hole. So if you're out in the park socializing, you wanna take a sip of a cocktail or regular virgin beverages. I don't know how many people do that. You're able to do that and be safe while doing it. So your book attendant cocktail. Also with the uh, face mask purchases, if you purchase two drinks or more, you get the face mask for 50% off. So hit that DM and get your orders in. So now I would like to bring in our guest, Miss D. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! This is why you have to clap to your back. I clap to my back. Clap, 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 clap. Hi guys, how are you? You know, I, I invited Tay into my dome up here. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me, book attender. No problem, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Yes. So before we even get started, what I like to do, like Wendy Williams like to do a shoe camp, I like to do the cocktail camp. So today, what is your cocktail? I asked Tay to bring me a good rum punch. This a good it. rum punch. I'm a Jamaican girl, you know, a girl of Caribbean descent. My ancestors <laughs> are uh, Jamaican. And, you know, our favorite thing or the favorite island thing for every island, I believe, is a rum punch. So what did you put in your rum punch today? So for this rum punch, I actually used four different rums. <laughs> I used a Dominican I'm gonna be rum. I'm going to be fucking bored right now. <laughs> <laughs> he got me drinking an empty stomach. Fuck a tender does not come with chicken wings and all of that stuff. <laughs> no, we, we didn't, we didn't <laughs> how do you come to a fat bitch house and don't bring her food? <laughs> but, you know, that's how those Virgo bit are, okay? <laughs> Miss D is a talker, so I made the cocktail prior <laughs> to the show just so we had extra time to enjoy Miss D's All company. this nonsense. <laughs> that's going on in the world with me. But if you all remember that they, uh, the cocktails that we do sip on the show, Sip and Inspiration, they are available for purchase. So if you do want to sip what we're sipping mm -hmm. and what inspires Miss D when she's sitting around <laughs> doing all her creative things that she do. Uh, am I using the right? The pronouns is fine. You can call me Rat Cat Dog. You can call me whatever you want to as long as you're calling me. You know? So, <laughs> What I've been waiting this, for this. What inspired this cocktail? Um, well, like I, I said to you. First. Okay, let me see. He never tasted, she never tasted, Miss D never tasted, so we, this is the first I need step. to get your host, get those pronouns together, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know me and start out, motherfucker. You yeah, don't have to say it. That's what you're calling. Sorry, that's why I was looking at you. Now, don't be like Caitlyn, okay? Don't be a Caitlyn Jenner. So, um, oh, this so, is delicious. You enjoy it? Yeah, but like on an empty stomach. Like, you know. You haven't eaten anything? No. You I just, thought you were bringing chicken wings. You did say you have a date later. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we're going to go right into. <laughs> so what is this? Like, a, a, this is a white rum, a Ray Nephew? It's actually, it's a Ray Nephew. Uh -huh. uh, I use the, uh, it's a Caribbean rum. What is it? Jamaican rum? Caribbean rum? <coughs> Ray Nephew is Jamaican. So I use the Jamaican rum. I use the Dominican rum. You're, uh, mm -hmm. I used the Dominican. Give us one second. We're going back live on Miss D's Instagram. It went out. Grab you some ice. So, so uh, going back. So we um, I, it's a it's a 
Jamaican rum. I use the Dominican rum. Oh, you all the men that I've had in my life. <laughs> Did you use I, a Puerto Rican one too? No. Oh. I thought the Dominican was the <laughs> No, Puerto Rican too. You need yeah. a Puerto Rican. It's just black. You can still we can still oh, see each other. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you have okay. a Caribbean rum. You have a have Puerto rum. Rican rum. Do you have like a coconut? I do have a coconut rum. Yes, I can taste the coconut. And I have uh, just Bacardi as well. Oh, that I mean that's the Puerto Rican rum. Oh, so I guess we can... Yeah, Bacardi's from, um, from Puerto Rico. Shout out to all the Puerto Ricans. I know you're about to start nations. acting up in 81 degree weather. <laughs> I think everybody's about to start acting up in 81 degree weather, actually, to tell you the truth. So, uh, let's talk about uh, one of the things I remember when uh, on your Instagram, because you posted about uh, you were out, like, doing... Not like the paparazzi, but you were at it was a uh, after party during Fashion Week. It was Rihanna's after party after Fashion Week, and you you saw the guests going in. You were, <laughs> he was like blurt out random stuff because he's very. Uh, I'm a current events kind of bitch. Inquiry minds, he know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I try. I have a you know people think like you know oh people always think that the clown is dumb. <laughs> You know, and I'm not saying me per se. I'm just saying the clown in general. People who always make people laugh, the comedian. You know, they always have you being like a bird brain, but you have to be very intelligent to make people laugh, That's true. to make people feel good, or to make people feel like you know, like you're that That's bitch. So like, hey, hey, Alicia. Hi, Keely. Hi, Black Boy. Book a tender <laughs> sip of tea with Miss D. Yes, we're live, bitches. We're, we're live. We're yes, here, I got a Ray and nephew rum. That's I got good. a good. So, what did you call a rum? You didn't give it a name. Box shot. This is box shot. Book attendant. Box shot. I, I, I was just going to go with a rum punch, but I mean, we, we could do The that. name for it is box shot. So if you want to... Because I'm going to take some box shots after they leave here tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, tell us about... The paparazzi, the paparazzi thing. thing. Yeah, the paparazzi so the paparazzi thing. thing was, I actually, um, had a gig. Uh-oh. Shout out to my uh, my good friend Jerome Forster, who is um, a singer, and he had a night at um, a jazz spot called Ruby's uh, in the West Village. And he gave me the night, so I used to go there and host. And I got off the A train, being a fat bitch, so, you know, go get on the Crosstown bus, that kind of thing. And when I went to get on the Crosstown bus, um, I also I have a on, uh, we'll be on. I'm posting <laughs> on YouTube, so make sure you all follow my YouTube channel if. You watch the video, hit a thumbs up. If you don't like Miss D, hit a thumbs down. Whatever. As long as you no, don't know thumbs down. Shit, I beat bitches up. <laughs> Come on, so, Miss Come on, Miss <laughs> So you got thumbs, thumbs down on me. I find bitches that beat them up. I'm a bitch that go in comments and go back and forth with people. So, so finish the paparazzi. So story. I went to go do my gig at the jazz club. I'm standing there in front of um the club. What was the club? What was the club? The club on 8th and 14th. What the hell is the name of the damn goddamn up and down? I'm standing in front of up and down, and um, you know, I see them like frantically fixing shit, and you know, people fixing lights, fixing the door, tapestry, all of the shit going on. So it never dawned on me, you know, because I was excited that my, my peoples were doing like a couple of people's hair of the the Met Gala. So you know, it never dawned on me like, oh shit, it's the Met Gala, so somebody's having an after party here. So I asked one of the, the like the production assistants. I go to him. I say, "Well, what's going on here? What, like, why are you going crazy? Like, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, fat nosy bitch. Why are you going crazy? What's going on? What the fuck is going on, y'all?" So he goes, "Oh, it's Rihanna's after party." I said, "Okay." I said, "I'm coming back over here." I'm getting I claimed it before I, I claimed it before I got on the bus to go to my gig. I went to my gig, sung, la 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 la, got paid, got back on the bus, and went out there. I've never met paparazzi a day in my life. I never knew any of them. <laughs> I didn't know, know anything. <laughs> so what they do is, is something that, you know, it takes you a while to know the powers that you possess, right? Yeah. People always be like, you're loud. You're so loud. You're so loud. Loud has worked for me my whole life. You know, and then when I'm quiet is when you should worry. <laughs> now, all my friends should know when I'm quiet. You should be like, this. when you be like, what's wrong with you? Like, something's wrong. It's yeah. like, I'm pissed. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> just don't want to say anything about it. So I get out there. It's all this paparazzi. You know, and when you meet paparazzi, you don't know if they're going to be Rutgers, if that's Times, if that's TMZ, mm -hmm. you know, because it doesn't really go like that. It could be, um, uh, what's the other guys? That's the cat. <laughs> that's Lionel. He wants to come out here because he, he knows there's people in here. So he was going to see who it is. That's right. allergic. I'm allergic. Um, nope. So yeah. you don't know who you're sitting there bobbing with. So when I was standing there, you know, I'm not like them. I don't have professional cameras. I don't know these people. These paparazzi people know people down to the time that they're coming. 
Yeah. People text them and tell them J Lo's on her way. This one is on her way. Mm-hmm. That you know. So they, when I was standing, I started talking to them. And like they like, oh, um, uh, Alex Rodriguez and J Lo about to pull up. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like they really gotta like in they phone to a science. Like you know. Wow. So I met this little white girl named Heather. Hannah, actually, Hannah. Shout out to Hannah because she follows me. Me and Hannah stood out there. She was like, stand out here and we're going to get this for the Let's go, bitch. So what made the paparazzi be like, you're powerful or you're doing what you do is Elon Musk, Tesla, creator, owner, founder of Tesla. Not founder, but creator of the president of Tesla now. He pulled up. I see the double cars, you know, double doors. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? You know, because he was early. And he got out the kind of suit and the tux. So I'm like, who the fuck is that? And this boy that I was talking to, he was like, that's Elon Musk. I'm like, oh, Elon Musk. I was like, Elon Musk is in the news because at the time he sent out like a mass email telling like his office or his people like to calm the fuck down with something. Like they're whining and being big babies or some shit. Like it was a, a it was like it was like a, a big news story about the email that he sent around in, in the email. So when he pulled up, I was like, Elon, Elon. When are you going to take us to space? <laughs> and he said, I'll have you in space in five years. You know, I'll have you, like flying cars, flying or him, SpaceX and all that stuff in space. He fixed his tie. He turned around and was like, I'll have you in space. Who asked that? Who asked that? I was like, me, me. He was like, I'll have you in space in five years. And he did it. Oh, wow. Oh. Elon. Yes. <laughs> when are you taking us to space? <laughs> Real soon. <laughs> Real soon. How soon? <laughs> about a year. I hear you. So after the paparazzi see me do that, they said, well, who are you? And I was like, exactly. I'm doing what you, he was like, how did you do that? And I was like, uh, you guys can't just stand on here and don't know the job. Yeah, you gotta know. You know, you asking them, them questions about. like you're antagonizing them, at least know some shit that you like, a t- a, a, you know, like you're gonna harass them about. And that actually leads me into my next thought. Uh, our, a lot of you all probably know Dr. Miss D from being a part of <laughs> On Edge Talk Show. Which was a a, a trio. It's fine. Me? It was a trio that he was a part of. It was him. No, it him. actually was like a, a quartet at first, right? Mm-hmm. I want to say it was me, Julius, Neil, Ricky Briggs, and Travis. So it was like five of us, right? Some people never even made it to the first screen. Uh, I won't say he didn't make it to the first screen. <laughs> <laughs> You know, everything ain't for everybody, you know? He might have had his, you know, his tapes on Pornhub and stuff that he didn't want to, you know, un- yeah, unroof. Yeah, yeah. You know, at the time with Raw Breeders and stuff was very popular. You know, I, that's what I got, you know? <laughs> he was worried about his fan base, you know? He's con- conservative, Republican gay, kind of, you know, that kind of thing. So all ads are cut. <laughs> It touched base <laughs> on a lot of different points. Like, it was supposed to be like the gay view. Mm-hmm. That's what we started it for. Gay view of what? Like the gay view. Like the gay Whoopi Goldberg, Joy Behar, Sherry Shepard, or it was Star Jones at the time, maybe? Sherry Shepard, Star Jones. It was supposed to be like that panel. Oh, the view. I yes, meant the you, view. I thought you meant like their point of view. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point of view is all collectively everybody's their own. You know, Julius, you know, you guys, I'm sure, you know, that's how I met this beautiful being here. And they're nothing alike, so I don't understand how they've been friends this long. But Julius, you know, one, two, oh, Ida. Um, you know, I'm the comedian. She's a comedian and, you know, Fashion Novice, Fashion Nova, Nova, you Novice. Fashionista. Nista, whatever. Fashionista <laughs> kind of girl, you know, and Neil was the, I want to say, not, well, Julie's also was a sub, southern debutante. Yeah. And fashionista, yes, fashionista. Yeah. And uh, Ricky was, you know, the southern boy that came to New York and was trying to find his way and, you know, still learning things, being from um, where he's from in uh, North Carolina, um, South Carolina. And um, the person who bails out the second show was supposed to be, you know, the the masculinity to balance it all out, I believe. Mm-hmm. He was the one who was going to be like the sportsman, I, you know. That's oh. what I envisioned for him. Oh, okay. <laughs> he thought we was going to put him in a boat. 
<laughs> but no, we wanted you to talk about the sports and the manly shit, yeah. you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but it was a you know like just a take, you know, because I figured I went I went to school for radio television. That's what I have to let people know. I'm glad that I have places I could go. Like I didn't just be like, okay, hey, let me just go do this. Let me just be like. So my dream of being a radio personality or internet TV personality in general comes from Wendy Williams. It comes from Wendy Williams. Um, I mean, I've always been this person before Wendy Williams, but hearing Wendy Williams on the radio was like, okay. That was the first time, like, you know, a, a bitch got, like, serious ADHD. But I paid attention to every word that Wendy Williams said. Her and Funk Flex for some opinion reason. Okay. And that's, like, that's real New York to me. Funk Flex, Red Alert, DJ Enough. I grew up with DJ Enough. DJ Enough is from my block. He's from Flatbush. He's on Ocean Avenue. I used to see DJ Enough come with crates coming from uh, going on world tours with Biggie and Kim. He used to be like, I know your girl. Give you records. Give you, you know. It's, it was just that thing, you know. So when I found, when I left high school, I was sitting around not doing shit. And my best, my best friend, Jean, called me and was like, bitch, we're going to school. We're going to school upstate New York. They give you your own housing. I filled out my financial aid papers and was out of Baltimore. See you later, Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Wait, so you were from Baltimore? No. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> born and raised in Coney Island Hospital. I am from Flatbush, Brooklyn. Okay. Baltimore is a little bit of a second home. Okay. <laughs> so wait, um, Wendy Williams, she did have a, a, a play with me, too, being here. Uh, when I went here, when I first moved to New York, I wanted to do the whole, well, I wanted to start a modeling agency. Yes, because you are a, a producer. You've been a yeah, producer for produce, 20 years, right? Yeah, Almost than, 20 years? Probably longer than 20 yeah, years. Yeah, I'll get out, okay. Yeah, actually longer than 20 years. But, um, so back then, I knew when I first moved to New York, I had to start from the bottom mm -hmm. and try to get my name out, meet people. So I have... Uh, one of my this job I was working, I got tickets to her birthday party. Is so, that the one with Jaheen? No, this one she was still married with that. I, actually, I don't know who was that. I, yeah, because my grandmother had went and got this whole. My grandmother, like we used to, my grandmother owned a bar. So when we would leave the house and go to go open the bar and stuff, it always was the slot of Wendy Williams coming in at two. Oh. So from her slot to us running around getting stuff, getting crab legs, it's when by the time we got to the bar, she was coming off and we was going to. I, it was some spot downtown. I forgot the name of the spot. It had to be the one with Jaheen. When you say with Jaheen. Like, like he was the performer. performer. See, I don't remember. I know oh, they had okay, a okay. fashion show. Mm -hmm. So with the fashion show, I was like, I missed the show because the person that was taking me, we have a live audience if you all hear somebody in the background. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the show, well, I had missed the fashion show because the person I went with was made me extremely late. So I uh, get there and I'm like, I didn't miss my opportunity. I was like, I, I was kind of upset, but I had on my all black because you know models they always have to attend events with all black on. So I stuck backstage and I met some people, some of the designers from the show, and connected with them and. That was the start of it. And then you went on to produce in the fashion shows. Yeah, here in New York. Now, did you imagine doing that? Nope. No. <laughs> nope, not at all. But after, like, being in the industry and working with different people, it was like, I can't base my money off of somebody Somebody's else. Career. So I said, let me just... I stopped and I started eating and now I'm here. I mean, you always look good, though, Tay. It's like, it's, I've never caught you. I've never seen Tay in a bad moment. <laughs> Look you know, you're a Virgo, you're a perfectionist. Look you know, you got that Michael Jackson, um, Beyonce perfectionist <laughs> thing going on, or the Virgo people out there. So I'm sure <laughs> we will never catch you in a bad light, okay? So on edge, mm -hmm. it ended up to just be three of you all, and then that led you to now. To it was three, it went from three, it went from five, four, three, two, two. one. <laughs> and that introduces <laughs> Sipping Tea with Miss D. <laughs> so Sipping Tea with Miss D comes from me doing another show after um, I did on this talk show. I did a show with two of my girlfriends called on, uh, Get to Know Me. Two girls from the Bronx, that brought me to my Bronx family, DSN, shout out DSN, shout out to Get to Know Me. That's how I got to the trade, you know, the rapper trade, and us doing shows with Funk Master Flex, and uh, uh, not Cap, what's the other one's name with the glasses, or like, just everybody you can imagine. You, you know the sippers don't know what you mean when you say trade, everybody. No? Knows. No. Oh, sorry, sippers. So, trade is just a masculine man. That's my definition. 
Because, you know, I think um, the the definition of trade is kind of plagued. And the hetero girl, the cis woman, has this idea of what trade is. And it's not like, um... So, they, for example, who would a name, a celebrity that they would know that's considered trade? Or like Idris Elba is a piece of trade. Idris Tretch Elvis. is an original piece of trade. Tupac is an original piece of trade. DMX is trade. Black Wild was druggy trade, but he was trade. Um... <laughs> Diddy is not trade, really. Okay, go back to... Uh, go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started... So, when I was doing... Um, I still was doing on that talk show when the rest of the girls wanted to go, you know, live their careers and do what they did. I still carried on the mantle because, you know, I was kind of the executive producer and creator of on edge talk show no matter what the other girls might tell you okay that show was really good too. <laughs> three different um, aspects. aspects but one person thought they were better than the rest i believe and that's how that crumbled but i thought it added to it because everybody had different i just felt like i i've i haven't seen that person since that person left the show go to sip and tea <laughs> <laughs> so we got to you know you sit around I got to this pandemic thing. People started dropping like flies and dying, you know. My trade, my trade lover partner thing started acting crazy, went about his business, that kind of thing. And I was sitting here like, okay, now's the time, you know. Because what was hindering my like, okay, I'm going to go do this, is I'm a bitch of the retail world. Mm -hmm. I'm very big in the retail world, that kind of thing. So it's like... Work, selling bags, making commission, being on buildings, campaigns, like, you, post, you know, yeah. You post bags on your, web, on your yes. page, Instagram. I mean, I don't, I don't work for the bad company now, but yes, at the time, okay. I was working for the bad company before we got into the pandemic. And then when it happened, I said, okay, it's now or never. You know, the girls just give you coins. They take care of you. The little back pay from the first couple of weeks that you wait. <laughs> you know, I had good commission checks you, left. You talking about you talking about unemployment? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. had a couple of good commission checks <laughs> left at, as the building closed, you know. And I said, I sat one day and I was like, okay, my first trip, I was like, I'm going to Charlotte. And when I went to Charlotte, my best friend Almeida has been in Charlotte for about maybe four, five, four, four years, three, four years, something like that. And I didn't see her. I haven't seen her since then. So I went and I was like, I'm going to Charlotte. When I was there, I talked to Almeida. I said, I'm going to Hollywood. I was like, this is the perfect time to go to Hollywood. I was like, if you're a blogger, creator, you know, artist, shit still move for you. You still can do shit, you know? So I actually created my logo thing after the logo thing. I had dropped some vocals before the pandemic had even happened for my song. And it just seemed like when the pandemic happened, everything came to fruition. So it was, the song was done. You know, the logo came, the logo, the logo was done. Like everything was like just getting done. And I was like, it's now. We're going to talk about the song too shortly. Yes. So it's like, do it now. Motherfuckers is dropping like flies. Or, you know, you never know what tomorrow got for you. That's true. And, and that's all that it was. And the pandemic, I think it did make either. I think it, it made everybody stronger, creative. Yeah, it made you stronger, creative, or. It know. made you realize, like, how much you don't need nobody else. For some. And then it realized, it made you realize how you how much you do need everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you can't do everything by yourself. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's so true. it was like now or never, now or never, now or never, now or never. So, so tell us about what's the what's the tea girl? What's the tea girl? So I was sitting here with that same very trade one night, and um, me and Julius did a show with a uh, artist named Unicorn from Jersey. Who Drink does, up, you're not drinking. Who I'm does drinking. Jersey? No, I love it. I just don't. I just don't want to be splashing on somebody else. Splashing later. I'll just come out the other side. It's not supposed to come out. Of um, <laughs> I uh, met Unicorn. So the inspiration behind What's the Tea Girl is Baltimore club music, though. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I learned about... I didn't learn about club music from Baltimore because you learn about club music from Chicago House. Right? I think oh, your yeah. first... I know about Chicago. Chicago, Chicago House, the House of Music in general. You know, you got your C.C. Penistons, your Robin S's, your uh, Crystal Waters. You know, I grew up very much with that. Uh, yeah, Crystal Waters. Uh, Marshall Jefferson, you know, uh, Cheryl Lynn, Got To Be Real. You know, all of that kind of stuff is like, it's club music. You know, it's yeah. stuff that I always loved. WBLS, Mix Hour, you know, House, that that kind of thing. What do you think? Do you know who Alex Noel is? I think it's Noel. He was a character on, uh, actually, I don't even know 
I don't know his correct pronoun, but that was a character on um, Glee. Like the no, last, never really got into the Glee. Girls. Like the last two seasons, I, I believe he was on. They had like this big competition. You have to compete in order to be on the show. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people that won. And he did. And he was a uh, he was a full figure guy, and he, he was kind of he had like a a different personality. So once he got on the show, he was like this shy black guy, heavy set guy that was on the show. So they evolved his character, I guess, because they found out more about him. He was actually a gay. He was gay. Like a gay oh, house gay. singer. Yeah, he's a house singer, but mm -hmm. he's gay. And then he's like a. It's sort of like I don't want to say. Don't he had say EJ John. Don't say EJ no, John. But he's a, so um, he's non-conforming. I guess so. There you he go. Has he's gender baby. fluid. He's the hair fluidity. So non-conforming. We're going to teach him something, you know, because he's from the old generation. <laughs> non-conforming. <laughs> That's yeah, I call him non-binary. Yeah. Don't you call it? They're gonna cut. They're gonna cut. This, they're gonna cut your little lie. I call everybody everybody. I, mean, you know, I don't know all of the terminology. Non-binary, goddamn it. That's what it is. <laughs> but no, he has a really nice sound. Like his house music is like crazy. See now, I'm trying to figure out now because now, now you know, I do a lot. I do talk show hosts. I could do fashion stuff. I could do a styling thing. I can do vintage collecting. I can do a whole bunch of shit. But my first gift was singing, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like um, that's what's going to make it. Make it for and, me. And you do a lot of singing around the city. Yeah. Um, I've done Sugar Bar. Like I said, I've done Ruby's. Um, I done did two funerals. No, two weddings in a funeral. Oh, wow. That's different. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I sung at my uncle's funeral. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just like I'm about to some change ago. But it was... <laughs> it was no, we're fine. Okay. It was very much like... A, um, you know, my thing with death is like, you gotta go. There's no holding in. There's no being like, oh, wish you were here. Since you got something else to do somewhere, I'll see you later. Okay? If I see you later. I'll see you when you get there. If I ever get there. Okay? That kind of shit? If you ever get there, <laughs> see you when you get there. Okay. Um, so I just feel like, in the sense of that, of being in a space at a certain time, like, okay, I can sing, and people be like, I hate people being like, sing. That's like the worst thing you could do to anybody with any kind of talent. You know? It's like, let them show you generally their artistry. Yeah, so it's genuine. You know? Now, yeah, so it could be genuine, so it could be natural. It's not like, yeah, sing. Sing, boy, sing. You see, Joe Jackson had to beat Michael Jackson. Sing, you know? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> he had to beat each and every one of them to sing. Okay? <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I, I'm I learning my sound now. I mean, I already know my sound. So like if I do do, which I have an EP kind of thing in my mind, I don't want to give that kind of way too much, but I want the sound to be traditional New York City house music. New York City really have house music? Yes. We do. Shit like um, Nunu. You know Nunu? When I saw her oh, yeah, walking yeah, 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 yeah. down the street. That's like that. That's, that's 80s, New York. 80s, 90s? 90s, 90s, yeah. yeah. That's New York house music. Yeah. yeah. Crystal Waters is New York house music too because she's from New York. I didn't know that. Yeah, she did that here. I didn't know that. Yeah. But Baltimore is where I discovered Baltimore club music and the Baltimore club sound. And it's also where I also discovered another person who was trans that was on radio. So it was the first trans person that I ever heard on radio. And she had a single on in Baltimore on the radio also. What, so know. that's what inspired my song too with the with the T Girl. So what is it about? So it's just about, you know, you know, bitches don't want that smoke. Um at the time that I made the song, it was about um girls $40. who take in forty dollars. Forty dollars is is a big it's a big controversy or girls taking forty dollars or girls doing whatever with $40. So, you know, it was a joke that I played on about the $40 because I'm a bitch that really would take $40. <laughs> then, you know, beggars can't be so cheesy. So what does $40 get you? I mean, no, I'm, it, it, <laughs> I mean I'm not doing it because I need the $40. I no, mean, yeah, you know, I and neither is the other bitches. But, I, you know, I know bitches <laughs> that are doing shit for less. Okay? What do you think about, um, <laughs> what is her name? She's really big in Atlanta. Um... Mary, that's her mama's name, Mary. Oh, T.S. Madison. T.S. Madison. I knew that you would bring me up here to fucking ask me about T.S. <laughs> Madison. So, I was just reading this. Um, I follow T.S. Madison. I've actually, I've actually met T.S. Madison through Bryce. Oh, 
Okay, yeah. You know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, you know, the girls can say what they want to say about Bryce, but Bryce comes through. Shout out to Bryce. You there, Bryce? Yep. Okay, shout out you to you. Bryce. Um, I met him. He was selling $150 tickets. And Ooh. he to when, when she came up here with the Queen Supreme yeah, Court. The I tickets like were that. like, you know, T.S. Madison wants like $150. It was I a whole, you got dinner, you got drinks, you got all of that shit. We was there. And bro, yeah, we all were there. And Bryce was like, um, you come here and shift this table around and shit, bitch, and work this ticket. And I'm like, okay. You, no, you we know. just sat at the table and ate and Yeah. Those. And she came out and I don't think that she could be... She does what she does with the trans girls. Don't, I'm not taking anything away from her. But I want to... It's the machine that's behind her that have them giving her like she. I've been reading like her texts, not her texts, her uh, her Instagram. I follow her Instagram and like you know her messages is like like she's a leader of some sort. Like she. Yeah, she likes to lead. She likes to. Um, but I don't feel I don't feel like she can do that yet. Okay. To be honest. Oh, I, I honestly I watched her whole show on um. We TV. Yeah, it was on the I watched mm-hmm. the whole the whole season. I think it was like eight. Eight or nine episodes or something. It was entertaining, and she it was, was like, serious too. Yeah, but she was the, like, the father oh. didn't like her and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't live with those issues. I know a lot of trans girls, trans people, gay people. Shit, hell, I know a lot of drug addicts that live with that kind of thing. You know, it's not only just trans people, but you know, when her father was like, "I don't want to be bothered with you," it's like, damn, and like you know. And I come from you. a hardcore, hard stone pirate Jamaican. <laughs> blood clot, pussy clot, cut your fears. <laughs> Jamaican family. And I sit and think about, like, I've never really had to deal with that from them. Like, you know, you get your Batiman and my CC and Auntie Man and all that from the other, you know, islands and all that kind of stuff, or Jamaicans in general. But when it comes to, like, my family stuff, I never had, like, oh, you're gay, you're a Batiman, get away from us. You know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, just when you heard, you know, you knew that was going to be the story. That was the storyline. But it's like, I don't feel like she has enough credentials yet for them to push her as this leader. Okay. You know, and it's like like she's a leader of the trans community. Okay. You know, like she, like you see how Janet Mock got up there and ripped Hollywood apart the other day, you know? T.S. Manor couldn't, T.S. I didn't see it. Sorry, yeah. T. She she did like a whole, um, you know, fuck Hollywood. Hollywood is not for trans people. Hollywood doesn't give anybody any right pay. And she went on a rant, told her man, I was sleeping, cheating on you. And dropped the microphone oh, the stage. <laughs> at the Pose wrap up party for their last and final season. Oh. It's a very big story wait, wait. right now. <laughs> She's the one that go with Angel. Yes, she told Angel, I was cheating oh. on you, fucking people on you, I don't like you, and walked away from her. That kind of shit. But T.S. Madison, they're trying to make her like, <laughs> like she's some kind of like leader. Which I'm not saying that she's not. I'm not taking that away from her, but I just feel like there's another group of girls that should be getting those flowers. Okay, wait. So, what do you think about? I don't know if you know Flame Monroe. Yes, I love Flame Monroe, Flame and actually, T. S. Madison just did a show with Flame Monroe. Another one? Yes, they just because did something the other that day. That show that they did was really, really good. funny. Because Flame Monroe's hilarious, and she's very smart. Yes, and I've never seen, um, you know, like her being exposed from. Early end of the day, though, because I'm a child that grew up watching Def Comedy Jam and no, 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 all no. Of- she, she's. Back in the day, she was strictly like Chicago clubs. Oh, like, okay, okay, that's, okay, that's okay, where okay, she okay. was at. Yeah, but I'm sure Flame has done, you know, she's done stuff. She's done a Def Comedy this was Jam later or on. Okay, this was later on. Okay, I don't think it was Def Comedy Jam. Though. I don't think. Don't don't quote me, but I don't think it was that. But I know she, she's scene, done some she's done some some comedy shows. <laughs> she has not, and if you pull up on YouTube, Flame and Rose, Flame and Rose, Flame and has uh, has her own podcast and all that kind of stuff. She disappeared for a good little while, and then all of a sudden, I found her on YouTube, and then she just became alive again once yeah. she met. Tiffany had hooked up with Tiffany Haddish. Mm-hmm. She's changed. Like her oh yeah, whole, Tiffany had her on the um, next something up on uh, Netflix or something no. like that. Um, what's the show on Netflix? The Netflix comedy. I know what you're talking about because they all were funny, but Flame Monroe was she's very funny. See, now, I don't know what her pronouns is. I she's, mean, I... No, she's like you just said about me. Uh-huh. I'm old school. Uh-huh. She's old school. She so don't she got has, all that. She don't have... She don't no. care about none of that. I mean, I know Flame has kids. 
two, yep. two three kids, kids three. three and you know but you know I commend those women like it just people don't really realize that it takes a lot for you to walk in, in any kind of shoes no matter who the fuck you are yeah you know and even I've been around a, a, a group of the celebrity people and a group of industry people you know and these people still have insecurities and shit mm -hmm. you know when you sit me I'm looking at you like you know I've, I've I'm, I met a designer one good time and me and him was having this conversation and he was talking about like his next line for fashion week or whatever and I'm like you have your stuff on everybody in the world that wants to have their stuff on and you're sitting here but he was a Virgo <laughs> that's so funny that I'm sitting here having this conversation with a Virgo and I'm talking about a Virgo but he was a Virgo you know and I was like you know I was basically telling him like you got it you already got it you know people need to hear like you got it you know like if somebody told you to bottle that shit up a long time ago and make them motherfucking drinks you've been serving drinks for fucking how long you've been had it you know sometimes people just need to hear you got it it's okay you can do it you know but, and that's how you got me here now because <laughs> a bitch got it no matter what anybody else the fuck is doing a bitch has it. It always has to have it. Okay? That's why I'm getting drunk with you and I'm going to go peace hey, I, for some I, young boy later. I, 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 I didn't toast to that. I mean, I didn't. I didn't toast Give him a good Alfredo that. sauce later. <laughs> oh my God. Alfredo. So I, I guess that's what $40 is. <laughs> no, that gets you Panay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm pregnant. I bet you was like shoe cam. So wait, uh, <laughs> this is hilarious. Book it to gonna, the baby to get me drunk on a Sunday. Have me acting crazy with his ass. We're gonna play the song a little later, right when we're yeah. Let me get it together because out. somebody was before calling us who that, wasn't on time, and I, I don't know where my phone is. Before we do that, uh huh. We wanna uh, it's over there. But before we do that, I wanna um, something that I do on the show. Okay, it's the random question. This question has nothing to do with nothing. It's just a random question. Uh, it's not sexual. It's not any of that. So you're going to pull that question out the hat and then read it to the people. We're going to write a question down today and, from Ms. D and put it into that so the next time somebody else has a chance to pull his question. What's your question? Oh, this is a good one. And you said it wasn't sexual, but it's a sexual question. What celebrity you can't imagine being sexual? <laughs> so let me explain the question before you answer it. It's like like uh, the good the good ones like the no, good any, anybody that you you any celebrity that you see but you don't see having sex period. No, you just can't see it. Jules eyes. <laughs> Julius Lamont Laboo motherfucking Williams. Is <laughs> she gonna call, she gonna call me after this and say, "Bitch, you said that on the show." Uh, yes. Who, no. Who? Caitlyn Jenner. Oh. Yuck. And my thing is yuck, yuck, yuck. She's like the trans Hitler. That's what she's about to become. And I'm telling you, she's horrible. Trans Hitler. She, she transitioned to be a man still. I don't understand that. <laughs> How do you transition to still be a dude? Oh, wow. You know, she transitioned and she says, I'm a lesbian and all this kind of crazy shit. And then she's on oh, TV. Oh, yeah, because she was having sex with women. Yeah, and then she's on TV talking about now that she's running for governor. Yeah. Oh, please. I mean, what's Please, name? please. What's I hope the Democratic name? people just please. What's Anybody stop her, please. What's his name? I'll be No, back. I'm not. Yes. <laughs> I was down for Arnold Schwarzenegger as the governor of. Um, he did a lot for California. But, you know, Caitlin. You know, now I see why Chris Jen and them don't be messing with her dumb ass. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they, they, they said that. Yeah, they said they're not campaigning for her. Good. Yeah, they, they know. They because posting. they know who their followers is. They know who they inspire. They know who backed them. They know how they got to 159 million views and followers and everything else under the sun. It's because of the gays. It's because of the gay girls, the rainbow kids. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine Caitlyn having sex. Ugh. <laughs> well, he said that one. Yeah. So, we want to play, play, play a snippet of his song. Wait, you want to give your question that you, you you guys you need time to think of it? No, you want to write it down? You can text it to me. I'll write that one. Okay. I got it in my head already. What is it? It's what's the biggest dick you ever took in and did it hurt? Okay. You have to, you ask me. You have to put that in here. But Sippers. I mean, what are they sipping for? They sipping to just be. They're, they're sipping for inspiration to see what <laughs> I, Oh, this is supposed to be like gospel, like church. Oh, that's why I got my cross on. <laughs> On my uh, hat. So, okay. 
Shit, you made me lose what I can't stop. You said play this song. Yo, we're going to hear a snippet of his song. And then once we hit it, I'm actually going to post it on the YouTube clip as well. So you can... It's called What's the Tea Girl. You can get it on all... Sorry, you can get it on all music streaming uh, platforms or whatever. I downloaded it on Apple Music. Yes, Apple Music. It's on uh, TikTok. I need some girls to TikTok, flip-flop TikTok to it for me and um i have the music video on youtube and that's tammy yes tammy or bliss tammy uh what day is that the 23rd 20 may the 23rd outside at the, at the pop-up shop tammy put that information in there they're doing a garden. Um, and you should tell your story. We want you to tell your story. Tell yeah, Tammy, you can come sit up here with me too. No, she's not. Oh, you're talking about home. But we both got shows. Yeah. So yeah. either one you want to come to, Tammy. But what I found out, the person to the right is the person that's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> can you turn your body down? We're going to get you on top. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. So we're going to hear a snippet of his song. She don't want that smoke. Can you hear it? I have my child locked in the room for them who's crying. He's been crying for an hour. You think they can hear it? Can you all hear it? Yeah, they can hear it. Faggot Bob. For all my gays out there, it's Pride Month, week, year coming up soon. The anniversary for you to be gay and do whatever you do. All the rainbow kids. All the. So here on Book of Tender, we want to applaud Miss B for all of her work. <laughs> Don't be, funny. you know, you and Julius are still calling people transvestites. I need you guys to. I thought that was the right thing. That is illegal. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so we want to applaud him for all, uh, uh, all the work that he put in for the community. We want to applaud him for this new song that's going to be a summer bop. bop. My, my last summer bop was an Usher song that the pandemic screwed over. Because I think the pandemic really ruined that whole album for Usher, actually. It was a really good summer song. The one with him, LMA? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it, Kyle? I don't know how the song goes. Sing! No, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I wasn't saying it like, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I, I can't really it. remember. I like, can't think of the name of it. You know? But, okay, so pretty much, let me just get to the point. We want to give you an award. <clears throat> The, the the one of many awards that he's going to receive. We're manifesting. And I want this to What's be on the wall with all the yes, rest of them. Yes. What's the award? Don't pardon, pardon what it say. This is going to be. A, this is an award for for your new hit single. <gasps> It's a it's a groomy. It's, it's better than the MTV, the right. BET, I'll take it. The ABC, I'll take it. The LGBT, it's a, it's a atten attender award, attendees. It's it's a sipping inspiration, <laughs> award. Look at look at that, look at the sparkle. Y'all see that sparkle? It's, yes, it's sparkling like it glass. matches the fucking glass. And here you go. That needs to go on your mantle. <laughs> that needs, to go. It needs to go on the. Mantle. I like to thank um, God first. All things are through Jehovah. You, Je you Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah can make everything possible. Okay, praise Jehovah and all your dreams will come true. Mwah. Love you, mommy. Love you, daddy. God bless. We want to thank you all for coming out. Coming out. You get it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. I think, hold on. I think, I think something happened. Oh, oh no. She's requested. No, no. no. We, we got, we got a special request. If you're on the real Terrence Day, come over to the book uh, and for some real entertainment. Yo, <laughs> my number one is the uh, host is here. Julius. Hey, Julius. Hello, guys. How, How are you? Doing? Darnell, mm -hmm. I want you to keep this me out of your like fucking a, video, this, bitch. Do keep what? <laughs> Congratulations. 
So, um, the single, like we were saying before we got really cut off by, um, Fashion Nova's president. Well, the single's called What's the Tea Girl? You can get it on all music, music, social media platforms. The single is on, shout out to DJ Saucy P, because that's who did it, out of Jersey, Newark. Shout out to all the Newark, uh, New Jersey, New Jersey club sound people out there. I guess I want to say I'm one of the few, the, the many. You know, I'm not really like, you know, like how they're doing it, but I did my little, my, my, my part, you know. How, how did you, how did, what inspired the video? So I went to California. I actually had a credit to go to California. I actually had like um, some money with JetBlue because my first time flying JetBlue, it took me 13 hours to get on the plane. Mm -hmm. And I actually sat there in the airport and I didn't want to go home because I was like, if I go home, I'm not going to go. My mother paid all this money to do a whole, you know, ranch and, you know, the home with the fucking everything in it and all that kind of shit. And I was like, all my family was there, all my cousins, all my block family, like everybody was there. And I was like, I'm going to this shit. I took work to go. So this bad storm came out of nowhere. Like, I don't know where it came from. It was tornadoes. It was all this shit. They had us sitting in the airport all day. Like, it's going to come. It's going to come now. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming, you know. And I just was like, if I'm going back home. So they gave me a credit because that happened, which they usually don't give you credits, but they gave me a hundred dollar credit. So when the pandemic happened and I was seeing all these prices, I was like, mm. yeah, tickets was I was like, let me get on this plane to go to California. And I think I paid $50 along with my credit to go to California yeah. round trip. Yeah. That's, yeah. It was cheap. So when I went to California, you know what inspired the video? What's God. <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm really giving you this real testimony because people think I giggle all the time that I don't have this kind of spirituality going on, but God made that video happen. He made it happen to the point where I got up there. I didn't know anybody. And the one person, Q, shout out to Q, Q Lovebug. That's his name on what you call it. But Q, Q Hardy does everybody here. He does Angela Simmons, Kamora's. He done did the Mises. He done did, he's I iconic hairstylist. Mm -hmm. Friend, you know, I met him through another good friend, stylist, you know, you know, all those people. And I had remembered that he was in California. And when I got there, I was sitting in the hotel, and I'm like, the people that I was supposed to meet started acting stupid. So I was like, what the fuck are you going to do? I mean, I'm fine anywhere I go, regardless, because people come to me to be like, oh, hey, you know, you want to do this, you want to do this, you know. I could do shit like bump into somebody and be like, well, we're going to this mansion party over here. You want to go? You know, this is this person's house. And it's like, oh, okay, sure, no problem. <laughs> like, you know, this is my friend right now. We met her from New York, you know. That kind of <laughs> and Q was like, bitch, you in California? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm coming to get you. So he said to me, where you at? I said, well, I'm staying at the Motel 6. <laughs> he said, the Motel 6. <laughs> I said, yeah, bitch. I said, the review said it was loud and it was hood people. And I mean, that's where I need to be. I mean, <laughs> where the fuck I was at? I don't need to be in uh, Chazé Lazette and all, uh, all the rest of the fancy shit, bitch, because I'm trying to bring my trade here, bitch, without them asking for ID and the last one they social. So, you know, this is where I belong. If the niggas is rolling weed and smoking blunts, that's where I need to be. So I said, I'm on Whitley and Hollywood Boulevard. Which, before I went out there, I did do my research to see, like, where it was. And once I seen that it was a synagogue in the neighborhood, I'm like, well, it ain't that much going on in the neighborhood if the fucking synagogue is down the street. Mm -hmm. The Jews is down the street. So they ain't letting that much go on with the Jews down the street. The Yarmulkes, the Coils, the, the synagogue, you bitch, I grew up with that, you know? So I'm like, I know it's a good place, you know? So I go there, and you know what he told me? After he, he called me, he like, bitch, I'm coming to get you where you at. I said, Whitley and Hollywood Boulevard. He said, you know what, Darnell? I'll be at the corner. At, I'm at the next block. <laughs> he was like, I'm, he, he no, he came to me. He walked down the street. He was up the street. Oh, he actually was. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was up the street, and I have not seen Q in years. And he was up the street. He like Darnell, stop lying. I was like, no, I'm serious. He's like, get the Motel Six, like right next door to the the building, like that looked like this. And I'm like, yeah, how you know? He's like, cause I'm up the street. And he was up the street cause he's he was working on doing his beauty book. You know, so he was working with the producer and the production people and video camera people. <laughs> and they met me and that's who did my video. So maybe you could set up an uh, uh, interview with him for Sipping Inspiration when we go to L.A. Yes. Um, I mean, Q's here too. He's here too? Yeah. He's in Harlem. I mean, he'd be all over. He's probably in Miami right now. But yeah, we could definitely do that. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, it was just all manifestation. Like, I set that up before I got there. The people that I talked to through Craigslist to do video stuff. And, you know, I was even trying to go out there and do a song and all that kind of stuff. Nobody answered. 
Like, nobody answered. They was like, oh, it's pandemic. We don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then when I got out there, all of that happened. I did a music video. I did interviews. I did all that. And you know what they say? Um, a lot of times, people don't need you to reinvent stuff. Mm-mm. All you just got to do is, you can do it the same way. Do it your way. Yeah. Right. It, it, because you work. think the person who made, when Scott made pink toilet tissue, that they didn't know. That somebody else is gonna make pink toilet tissue, right. even though I don't think they sell pink toilet tissue no more. I think it probably. Oh, they do. Or something. Oh, okay, maybe. So that's. I why. think all tissues. Uh, like, uh, Johnson and Johnson, baby powder, Moderma shots, Pfizer. It's like, what do you do? Herpes, syphilis. Ooh. What do you do? It's so much what? shit out here. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We created the shit. What did, we created all the monsters, mm. right? Okay. The girls couldn't put baby powders on their box, and now they letting them shoot them up with vaccinations. You don't even know what's going on out this bitch. You just gotta go with the flow. You well, know, everything are you getting ain't vaccinated. <laughs> no, not to be one of those girls, <laughs> but I think the girls need a vaccination for the gays before everybody else. I thought they had one. No, prep is not a vaccination. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me sound so outdated. But that's, just, <laughs> What's that what you were talking about? Prep and Truvada is not a vaccination, bitch. <laughs> Truvada got some of the girls' green fingertips going on out this bitch. Really? Double that. It's a lot of side effects of Miss Truvada. It's people suing Miss Truvada. She has class oh, action yeah, yeah, lawsuits yeah, yeah, and shit yeah, yeah. out here. True, and I people don't it. care because it's not like women or, you know, like a, a group of people that need to be focused on a lot. But a lot of girls are like getting sick from taking prep, you know? And just like the gays, th let me say this to you before I go, because this is sipping an inspiration, right? Here's an inspiration for the gays, right? Okay. Every time something go on, you bitches on Grindr is ready to be like, prep. Or now they up there like fully vaccinated. <laughs> and we know you bitches is motherfucking lying. Okay? I mean, I don't. No, but I'm just saying in general. Half, they up there half vaccinated, one, half vaccinated, fully vaccinated. You know, they be lying. They be lying. Don't trust them girls are saying that they're fully vaccinated. <laughs> if they so happy to tell you, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm fully that vaccinated. Not. Yeah, when it comes to the gays. Now, they everybody are, else. They the doctor. Right. They be lying. <laughs> men do not go to the doctor. Not all men, but some men don't go to the doctor. <laughs> but they love to put that prep and love the, that. They got prep up there now and fully vaccinated. I can't take you cunts. The sippers might not know what uh, prep is. Prep, I mean, well, they should because prep is given to hetero people also. So it's given to cis people. It's given to all people, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, prep is given to everybody. But I thought so it was only prep men. is pre, right? Prep is pre prophylactics. Is that just how you say it? So prep is something to appeal to take so it lowers your risk or your chances of getting um, HIV. Do, do, do our live and audience then, know what prep stands for? I can't. I I I think it's uh it's pre something. something pre uh, prophylactics. I think is that is how you say it. Cause that's the prep prep. Yeah. So it's for you to take it beforehand, right? And then PEP, I believe, is the one if you feel like you was exposed. Okay. Right. Like you might have been exposed, or you might have did something with somebody, and you feel. Like, oh my God, I don't know why, I don't know, but I don't know this person. I feel kind of way, and I want to take this. So they give you that. But I believe that vaccination-wise, yes, I'm going to go get a vaccination. I mean, I grew up getting vaccinations. I also grew up with, you know, aunt, aunts and uncles and family members and grandmothers and all of that, you know, dealt with polio and the flu and some, the Spanish flu and all kind of stuff that they dealt with, Ebola's and, you know, Hotel Rwanda's and West Niles and <laughs> all that kind of shit, you so, know. So you're going to get the vaccination? Yes. Okay. After a couple of motherfuckers fall off a little bit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but just not right now. If it's, if it's going to hinder your your life, you me going to go do the things that I do, yes, I'm going to go get vaccinated. Tell the senders, I mean, tell the sippers. <laughs> oh, you put tip, book was, tender is, is sipper, inspiration to together? <laughs> tell the sippers how to reach you, how to contact So, you. I am Ms. D. I have an OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> I'm giving um, oral tutorials on my on my OnlyFans. I think that you guys should watch. Oh it's a really God. good thing. Um, Are it's, you serious? Yes, I'm very serious. Um, it's Insta Edge on uh, Instagram. Um and sipping tea with Miss D on YouTube. What's the tea girl on all music streaming music uh, platforms? Um, if you got some kids that would like to dance around on TikTok, I mean my song is not that vulgar. I mean kids would take forty dollars too, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
And don't support the movie Secret Society. Why? Don't. See, that's that old system. Old systematic <laughs> stuff going on here. I thought it here. was an excellent movie. I See? That's that old... You and the, Julius, what they call the people trans, that's the Hitlers. These are the Hitlers. What's wrong with The, the Hitlers uh, of the gay community. What's, There's a lot what, of Hitlers in the gay community. So I'm, you're just like stuff? Caitlin. Oh my God, signing off. We're out of here. <laughs> they gotta go. <laughs> what's wrong with that movie though? We can't talk on another show. The next time he asks me, when he come on 17 with Ms. D, we're gonna talk about Secret Society. <laughs> One more time. He brought me a ball, a ball to my house. A disco ball for his disco song. <laughs> so... Thanks for sipping. Yes, yes, and yes. Are you leaving the bottle here? Did people ask yes, that on the show? Yes, Leave it here, Khan. Leave it here. Book a tenta. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, right now, AKA Miss D, AKA America's oh. favorite auntie uncle, coming to you live from Venice Beach, California, baby. A bitch made it. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna get some clips, some scenes, this good old video that Directors Cut LA is about to do. Q Love, Mary Lewis here, and bitch, we on the beach, Venice. Eat it up, Venice. Eat it up. She don't want that smoke. Miss Thing with the two she don't know how to read, honey. Then she just don't know how to read. Girl, huh?